Hi everyone, welcome to this week's new video at Visiting Dutch Countryside. For the ones in here, oi, welcome. My name is Manon and I am Dutch and at Visiting the Dutch Countryside you'll be discovering the Netherlands beyond the crowds with your favorite look. In this week's video you'll be learning basically things about driving in the Netherlands and the driving culture, if we have one. Not really. Uh, it's nothing major like you can see, for instance, in very car-dependent countries such as the United States. Hint, do something about your public transportation and your bike lanes. You will also know some prices for fines. I would not recommend you to get a fine here because they're very expensive, but if you get one then you sort of know the direction it will go into. You can also join me on my Patreon, linked in my bio. Don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe with the little notification bell so you won't miss out on any of my other upcoming videos. And let's head into the video. So driving in the Netherlands is, generally speaking, not someone's entire personality in a way that it sometimes can be in, for instance, the USA. People are also generally not forced to drive and public transportation is pretty good in most places in the Netherlands and basically shops are everywhere as they're found in small towns and villages so there's no not really a need to have a car or to you know have a driver's license it's not a necessity and obviously our cycling infrastructure is so good that it also takes away many people from the roads according to the CBS which is a government agency there are roughly 11 million people in the Netherlands that have a driver's license in 2022. More men than women have a driver's license, as it's estimated that 85% of all Dutch men of 17 years and older have a driver's license, and for women it's around 75%, so it's a 10% difference. The difference is the largest at 70 plus, where 85% of the men 70 years and older have a driver's license and only 53% of the women. But yeah, the younger generation obviously gets more equal when it comes to that part. So in order to get your driver's license in the Netherlands, you need to take lessons at a school or a driving school. There are tons of them all throughout the Netherlands and we generally learn how to drive stick, as we do in most of Europe. After your instructor deems you good enough after lessons, then you first need to pass a theoretic exam. And only after you pass that exam, the instructor will schedule the real exam in their car. But during that exam, your instructor will usually not be in the car, but someone from the CBA, which is the only organization in the Netherlands where you can get your driver's license from. So there are large differences between the people with driver's licenses in the Dutch countryside and in the Ronstadt area and cities. In the countryside, most people do have their driver's license because even though public transportation is really good in the Netherlands, it is often lacking in the countryside region. It doesn't run as often, the routes are not convenient, so yeah, it's there, but it's not always uh, convenient. And it always takes a lot longer to get somewhere. So, and sometimes, well, not sometimes, oftentimes biking is even faster than <laughs> getting a uh, getting a bus or something like that. I mean, it also makes sense because it would not be financially feasible to have buses every, you know, I don't know, four times an hour when there's only one person getting on the bus. So to get from my village to a nearby city is roughly one hour by public transportation, but only 24 minutes by car. And it is, you're even faster when you're going on bike. But not everyone in the countryside has a car, so most people have driver's licenses, but not exactly a car. So it is estimated that from every five people between 18 and 30, one person has a car inside city areas, and two people have cars in the countryside. So yeah, double the amount. The most popular cars in the Netherlands are Volkswagens, Peugeot, Opels, Toyotas, and Renault. So you won't see many large trucks in the Netherlands because one, no gas. It's very expensive. In the beginning of June, the price for one liter of Euro 95 was almost two and a half euros. So of this, roughly 56% went to the oil companies, etc. And 17% went to taxes and 26% or so went to excise duty. So yeah, it's expensive. Oh, well, it's, it's one of the main reasons why we don't really have those big cars, but also because it's really not necessary. 
We generally donate in little way too big for the average Dutch person and parking spots are not that ma massive and neither are our roads. Yeah, what's the, what's the use for a car like that? So yeah, we don't really have a driving culture. But we do have a cycling culture but not a driving one. Now we're going on to a very important part of this video. Driving tips. So when you want to drive in the Netherlands there are some standard things that you need to know and rules that you need to take in account. So I want you to be safe but I also want my fellow Dutchies to be safe too. So I don't want a maniac driving on the roads. <laughs> so first things first. We drive on the right side of the road and have done so since the last French occupation under Napoleon II. The maximum speed inside villages and small towns is, generally speaking, 30 km an hour. In small cities and cities there are often places where you can drive 50 km an hour, but you will see it on the road. There are these signs. So outside the town and villages and country roads, you will find 60 km roads, which are the smaller roads that lead to other towns. An 80 km road is usually an end road and has quite a bit of traffic. So at highways in the Netherlands, roads with that start with A, such as A7 or A9. You can drive between 100 and 130 kilometers an hour. These are our highways. It depends on the time of day and the part of the highway where you're driving at, which speed you can drive at. So always make sure to watch the road signs. Up next, alcohol and driving do not go together. So do not do that. Um, keep yourself and other people safe and otherwise you'll get fined and will also be just a huge arsehole. But anyway, fines. Fines are very expensive in the Netherlands, so I would not recommend you to get one. But yeah, that's just me. Perhaps you have enough money to sponsor our government. But yeah, so a no seat belt fine is 150 euros currently. So these are some of the current prices. They often change every year, so. Uh, no seat belt, 150 euros. Wrong parking. If you put your car in a disabled spot, the fine is approximately 400 euros. There are also tons of other examples of wrong parking, which are endless, but they include parking on cycle path, double parking, and so on. So speeding, it starts with 25 euros, up to 346 euros, and up to 30 kilometers over speed limit, it will be a fine. So after that, it will go to court. Driving under influence anything from 300 euros to a prison sentence, it depends on the amount of alcohol that you have in your blood. Riding through a red traffic light, 250 euros. Having a telephone in your hand, 350 euros. If you have an expired driver's license, less than one year expired, the fine is roughly 100 euros. More than one year and it is 370 euros. If you're not able to show your driver's license, it's 100 euros. Honking your horn when it's not allowed, 150 euros. Blocking a junction, 250 euros. Not keeping your right on a highway, 220 euros. I will talk more about uh, not keeping your right on the highway a bit later. Because it's important to so know. Because I learned that not every country does that. They should. It makes driving a lot better, in my opinion. But I will. So we have something that is called a spitstroop or a rush hour lane. This is basically the emergency lane on the right side and the line is continuous. So this lane is not always open, hence the name, <laughs> and they are also not everywhere. So you must watch at the matrix signs above the highway to see whether you can use them or not. A red cross means you do not drive here, obviously, and only a green sign is the sign that you can drive there. If you want to pass cars on the highway, you can only pass them from the left side. You cannot pass them on the right. So what I mean by that is, for example, if you're driving in the right lane and there's a car in front of you that you want to pass, then you switch lanes to the lane that is left of you, pass the car and head back to the right side. So you do not go, usually you have the car in front of you, go to the right, pass them and go to the left. No, it's not how we do it. So drive on the lane that is to the most right of the highway. So of course you can keep driving on the left lane if the road splits up and you have to follow the left lane to get to a destination or if you're passing people. But you do not just keep driving at the left or middle lane for no reason. You go to the most right side or just the second lane. But if you're not passing people, you should just go to the most right lane. Another important thing is the emergency vehicles. 
So emergency vehicles in the Netherlands always have the right to go if they have their lights or sirens on. So you can obviously recognize them by the noise and colors. For instance, uh, an ambulance is bright yellow color, firefighters are red, and police have red, white, and blue marks. You must always make room for them so that they can pass. If you don't think you can do this or think you'll panic, please don't drive on the roads because you want people to go to the, to the side and make room for if your family member is in there or if they need to rush to your, your family. So be a good driver and make room for them. So another thing that is useful to know when driving in the Netherlands is that the Netherlands is obviously a very densely populated country. So we have many forms of traffic that you need to take into account when you're driving here. So we've got scooters, buses, pedestrians, other cars, motorbikes, trucks, trams, tractors, cyclists, and they can all come together at the same time just because it's fun. We do that to mess with tourists. Well, maybe. Watch out. Always. If you think that you've seen it all, watch again. <laughs> because you probably haven't. Then, traffic lights in the Netherlands work in the following way. So green is obviously drive. Orange yellow means that you should be prepared to stop. Depends on how close you are to the traffic light. If you're obviously driving under the traffic light and it goes orange, obviously you can pass. But yeah, if you're a bit far away, then you should stop. And the next color is red. So red obviously means to stand still completely. You can never pass a red light in the Netherlands, like I said, big fine. It's also very dangerous for other traffic. So the light then goes from red straight to green. So it doesn't go from red, orange, yellow to green. It just goes from red to green. So you can start driving again. Always stop at a pedestrian crossing if you see that someone wants to cross, no matter if you're on a bike or in a car. So I know that not every cyclist does that, but that seems to be a city thing or so. But yeah, we call them zebra pada or zebra pods. At the most right side of many highways, there is an emergency lane called Vluchtstrook or Refuge Lane. Sometimes this has been transformed into the rush hour, so that's fun. Um, there's also at the left side sometimes, uh, but yeah, you can only stand there if there's really an emergency, such as your car broke down, etc. If you unfortunately had to make it there, please cross the metal highway barriers and stand behind them in the grass until help has arrived. So, what next? Rotondes, or roundabouts in English. They are everywhere in the Netherlands and very convenient. They help the flow of traffic immensely and are very easy to use, but apparently if you're not used to them, they might seem a little bit odd or confusing. It's not confusing, just drive into the roundabout when there's space and use your indicators to signal when you're at the section that you want to get off at the roundabout. So when you're seeing sharp teeth or high on the, in Dutch on the road that point in your direction, you need to stop for traffic. So these are painted on the road. Also when you're driving inside a village, town or city and there are no sharp teeth anywhere, then you need to give priority to the people who come from the right whether they are cyclists, cars, whatever. Unless they are coming out of an uitrit, which is a sort of speed bump on the end of the street where it then connects to the main road. Up next, traffic signs in the Netherlands. We have a lot of traffic signs in the Netherlands, but these are the most important ones.
parking in the Netherlands. So parking in the Netherlands is very expensive. I do not recommend. <laughs> but you can generally park for free at most train stations in the Netherlands, but not within big cities, obviously. If you want to park somewhere in a blue zone or blauwe zone, then you need a blue parking card, parkeerschijf in Dutch. This card can be bought easily at local HEMA or tons of other shops, and then you put this card inside your window with the time of when you arrived up, and then you can stand there usually two hours, but sometimes only 30 minutes, it depends on the city or town. The blauwe zone or blue zone is valid from generally Monday until Saturday, from 9 to 7 or 6. If you do not use the parking card in the blue zone, then that's illegal and you will probably be fined and that is not fun. So. Also, if you want to rent a car in the Netherlands, then you should prepare yourself that most of them have manual gears and are not automatic. If you want to drive an automatic car, then you often have to pay more. If you want to put some gas or whatever you call it, benzino or diesel, in your car, then you need to do that yourself. So there are no people that put it inside of your car for you. It's self -service. So and then you go, depends on the, on the station, but uh, often you then need to walk inside and with your little receipt that you got and then you pay indoor. Thank you so much for watching this week's video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something from it. I hope you know what not to do. <laughs> Because that is essentially the most important part. Don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe with the little notification bell so you won't miss out on any of my other upcoming videos. Big thank you to my patrons and I will see you next time.